adjacent or is this adjacent? This is Brooklyn Heights. Brooklyn Heights. It is adjacent. Adjacent. Okay. And I'm speaking with Seth Foreman. Seth Michael Foreman. Seth Michael Foreman. Thank you. And he is a customer of ours and he is a painter. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got into painting? Um, it's a good question. I think in college, my first painting class was when I was about 20 years old and I just had a very inspiring teacher. And the minute I started, I couldn't stop. Mm -hmm. So, kept going. Been painting ever since. And you live in Brooklyn Heights, but you also have a home in Connecticut. In Connecticut, in Kent, Connecticut. And so you commute back and forth. Yes. And you also teach. And I teach, yeah. I teach painting from beginning to advanced and uh, technical classes, a variety of classes of painting I teach. Right. So you have a eclectic life. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but what I'd like to do now is just talk a little bit about your studio. And maybe you could show us around. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in the materials and I'm also interested in the process. I know, I have read, that your paintings take quite a while to do. Yeah. So maybe you yeah. could talk a little bit about that too. Well, um, the process that I have is really a kind of indirect painting process, which means that it starts with a drawing on a panel. Um, sometimes it's like a wash drawing with oil. Mm -hmm. And then I gradually build up layers of paint. And often the composition is set right from the beginning, but it takes a long time um, to kind of get the depth and the richness of the color that I want. So I'm layering um, many, many layers of opaque color and transparent color back and forth until I can um, really build up the kind of surface and texture that I like in the painting. And um, it's hard to, to know how many layers it will take because it's kind of an intuitive process. But it takes many, many months. And sometimes I work on paintings and put them away for a while and start another painting and pick another painting up again. So it can, sometimes they can take years to paint. If I'm painting on a painting steadily, it can take as many as three or four months. On a larger painting, sometimes six or eight months. Uh, so it depends. Well, that's interesting because when I'm working on projects, I often work on multiple projects and then I put it away and then I come back to it, and then all of a sudden, it's there. Yeah. I understood what wasn't quite right about it, mm -hmm. and why it wasn't quite complete. Can we look at this painting over here, because this is a, let's go over here, and maybe you could talk about this. This is a remarkable painting. Thank you. Um, where should I start? Um, well, how did you decide to do it, the subject matter? You know, this, that's actually the most difficult question for me because often images just kind of pop into my head. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not the kind of painter, as narrative as my paintings look and feel, mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of painter that has a story to tell. And what happens is I usually um, get either a complete image in my head that starts to evolve as I paint it, and sometimes um, it's more just a vague idea of an image. Mm -hmm. And as I'm painting it, it starts to remind me of things and I draw from memories and sometimes these memories can be very specific, sometimes they're kind of vague associations and my painting process is just very intuitive like that. Mm -hmm. um, once I settle on the image, that's, um, that's when the painting really starts because the composition is defined and then it's that process I just described a few minutes ago. Um, as I started this painting, it reminded me of a diverse range of things. Um, one was a book that I had read recently called Descartes' Bones. And um, this was an interesting book because the skull of Descartes was um, stolen and taken through history. And this, this book kind of takes you to, through a tour of history that describes um, various periods in time all centered around the skull of Descartes. And it wasn't something I set out to do, but it was um, something that, of course, inevitably may have been in the back of my mind as I was working. But not coincidentally, the skull in this painting is actually an earlier sculpture of mine. And that skull is, the model for it is here. This was a sculpture that I did in about 1990, 
1991 or 1990, somewhere around there, uh, I did a number of plaster sculptures that had to do with um, artifacts and bones and anthropology and such. And that imagery carries through to my current work sometimes. So, um, so between those things, you know, they, these ideas come kind of in and out of my paintings, almost um, in a kind of dreamlike or a daydreaming kind of way about the image. Um, and ultimately, I hope it's just a strong feeling that I can get in a painting that will pose maybe more questions than answers. That's what I see when I look at your painting. Oh, good. <laughs> exactly. And I, and I keep coming back to them because I think, oh, I didn't quite see that before. Or what is that? And there's this whimsical kind of surrealistic quality to them. This one over here, too, is especially intriguing to me. Let's, let's get a close-up of this one. Uh, and now, when I look at that, you know, I think, what well, this man is mysterious. Mm -hmm. And when you look at it, this person, what, what memories is this about being a young? Um, you know, nothing really specific. Not as specific as this other painting here. Um, but often the small ones are a way for me, first of all, to have some relief for a painting that won't take as long. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they're also a way for me to try out some, some new palette of colors that I'm thinking about. Mm -hmm. So a lot of it's very formal. Yeah. And also maybe exploring a kind of um, almost a portrait head. Many of the figures are invented, but often on the little paintings, I actually use people that I know for them. Oh, really? Um, this one in particular is an invented figure, and, um, and I use that, uh, that method to help with a kind of confidence or an idea that I might have for figures I'm going to create later in other paintings. So I think of them almost as if I'm creating characters.